landscape of a Japanese garden in autumn with a bridge over a koi pond. All right, so we're gonna be checking out real-time text-to-image generation, which is really cool. Now, I actually haven't been doing much AI videos on my channel much due to the fact that it actually doesn't view well. So I actually keep it to myself. Now, I do enjoy playing with AI, like text generation, web UI, or stable diffusion, all this other stuff. I've, I've just been having a lot of fun building it, but this is such a cool thing that I actually had to show it off. The most impressive thing about this is as I'm typing what I want, it generates the image. So yes, real-time image generation is really cool. Anyway, let's jump into the desktop. All right, so here we have the website from Stability AI, and they're the one that released the model. They actually talk a little bit about this whole text-to-image generation model and where you could get it. So we are actually gonna be getting it from Hugging Face, which I already clicked over to a link, and these are the two models that you want, depending on which. I actually use the FP16, but you could use either one and it works. Uh, the interface that we're going to be using is something called Comfy UI, and it's um, similar to what you would get with Automatic 1111, but it's more node-based, so I'll show you what I mean. It's basically a breakout of this, and you could actually perform different tasks. So instead of saving an image, you could actually preview an image instead, which saves you time. And there's a few other things that you could add to this or remove from this, or you can even have this generate an image, then output to an upscaler, then output to an image. So you could actually like set how you want the image generation to be. So it's a little bit more advanced than Automatic 1111 with their stable diffusion. And this has one feature that that does not have, which is auto queue, which allows the real-time generation part. So to install this, we do need a couple of things, which is Python and the drivers for your graphic card. Now I did run this with a Rock M 5.6 before with the AMD graphic card that I had, but it was so slow because I only have an AMD 580 and that's like really, really old. I did put in a 1070 in here, which is still not as fast, but it works with this setup. So we're just gonna be installing the CUDA version instead. So. This is basically how you would get everything working if you want. So I'm gonna jump into it. Now here we have our little terminal. Let me make this a little bit bigger. And we are gonna grab this comfy UI. So I'm gonna do git clone and grab that. And it's very small. Here I'm just gonna make a directory for environments. So I'm just gonna call it pi en ev, whatever. And in here, I'm going to do Python 3 dash M V E N V P Y E V. And it's going to enable this directory to be a Python environment. Next, we just do source P Y E V bin slash activate. Now, why I'm doing this is because we actually are downloading a lot of stuff through pip and you wanna keep your environment enclosed so you don't break your system. So now that I have the environment all set up, all I have to do is just grab the version that I need, which is this one, CUDA. And you could use the nightly version if you want. Paste that in here, and it's just gonna run its thing. It is a pretty big download for this CUDA driver. I think it's like two, maybe two gigs. Yeah, it was roughly about 2.2 .2 gigs just to download the CUDA drivers. And now that everything is downloaded, we just have to switch directories back to our comfy UI what we get earlier. And then in here, we're gonna do pip3 install dash r, and then we're gonna do requirements. This will install the rest of the stuff that is required by Comfy UI, and then that's it. We could just start up the package as soon as this is done. All right, now with everything finished, I could just clear this screen, and I'm gonna do Python 3, and then I'm gonna run main.py. Now, because I don't have much RAM, I'm gonna run low VRAM, and if you want to be able to host this on your network, you could do listen, and it'll actually open it for every IP address. But for now, I'm just gonna run low VRAM. And there we have it. We have our little web UI over here. So all we have to do is just navigate over to it, 127.0.0.1.81 8188. And there we have our comfy UI UI. Now, I do still need to download the safe tensor and move everything over, so just give me a second. All you have to do is just copy the models to their folder, Comfy UI, Models, and go to Checkpoint, and then you can paste your models over here, and it'll be able to detect it. All you have to do is just hit Refresh, and you should be able to choose the ones that you have. 
So we could use either 16 or regular because I downloaded both. And all you have to do is just hit Q prompt. This will actually run everything in the background to run your first image generation. And there we go, we have our first image and it's already saved because it's actually set up to save the image every time you generate it. You can make this bigger if you want. You have your 512 by 512 width, how many batches, what the seed number would be. There's a lot of things that you could set up here that you could set up on uh, Stable Diffusion Web UI. So things are not too different, but you can add new prompts to this. So if, instead of saving the image and I want to preview an image instead, I could do preview image, grab that. All you have to do is just double click on any empty spot and then that will open up. And instead of saving the image, you can now drag this over to preview image and you get rid of this if you want. And then now if I run the same prompt again, oh, I gotta get rid of this, remove this and then Q prompt, it's gonna run it again. And anytime you see a green bar, that's the process that it's working on. So right now it's still working on the image generation itself. It's on 20 steps, which is a lot for my 1070 right over here, but it's still able to do it. And then it'll actually process this information, move it over to VAE decode, and then move that over to preview image, which is really cool. I really like how this whole thing kind of like works out. So there you go, it's green, and then it previewed this image. To use Stable Diffusion Turbo, we do need to change this environment quite a bit just to get it to work the way we want it to. So what I'm gonna be doing right now is actually setting up this desktop. So I'm gonna add a, a few things. First thing what we need to do is get over here and do SD Turbo Scheduler. And we're gonna need that, okay? And then we're gonna need K Sampler, select, all right? And then sampler custom right there. All right, so we're gonna get rid of this K sampler and move everything over to this sampler because of all these other settings that are in here. So basically you have the turbo scheduler which basically is your steps and we have that here. We don't need it in this sampler anymore so that's why we're using a custom sampler. Now we're gonna have to attach everything from here to here. All right, so now our it goes from our model to go to the input model and then the sigma would go from here to sigma. And you could see it's lit up compared to the other ones. So that's where I'm gonna connect it to. You have your conditioning for your positive prompts, which is over here. And then you have your conditioning for your negative prompts, which is over here. Now, keep in mind, this actually does not work on this model, which is the SDXL Turbo Sampler. It doesn't work, so you don't actually really need this, but you do have to have something connected. Now, the latent, we have to move this over to here. And then our K sampler right over here, we have to move this over to the sampler. And again, we didn't do our negative prompt because we actually moved that by accident to the positive prompt. So let's do that negative prompt. Let's get rid of that. The positive prompt's gotta move down here. And then we gotta move our model over to here. Now we could get rid of this. And then our output, we have to move over to here to our sample. And then our image goes back over to our preview image. Now this looks like a huge spider web of stuff, but it makes sense once you add everything up. Now with that being said, I should be able to create this in a much faster way. Now this is still running on my 1070, so it's actually not as fast as I want it to be. And you can see the quality in difference because we are only using one step instead of 20. Now, what I'm gonna do now that you see everything all set up, I'm gonna actually jump over to my desktop, which is which has a 3080 instead, and you'll see the difference in speed. All right, so here we have it set up to uh, my desktop PC, which has the 3080, and if I hit Q prompt, it's almost instant, and it's much better than my uh, 1070. Believe me, it's, it's way much better. And one of the features that I was saying earlier that automatic 1111 doesn't have, is this extra option right over here. As soon as I hit that, I could auto queue. And auto queuing allows me to do the real time image generation. So after I enable this, I'm gonna hit Q prompt. And now it's just gonna be running in the background. You're gonna see this Q size 1010 one, might pop up from time to time. But now if I delete this, it's gonna automatically generate an image. Now I could actually type whatever I want in here. So let's try cute dog. Ooh, okay. With top hat in grass field 
running. Look at that. That's instant image generation. It's as I'm typing it, it's generating. Now you can see the quality isn't as great, but you can actually change the stepping and it gets better as more steps gets introduced. But still, this model is not perfect. There's still some um, issues with it, like hands, fingers. It's not trained to the point where it's like perfect like all the other models, but you can at least get a general idea of what you want and it runs really, really fast. Now I'm gonna try another image now. Let's say um, landscape of a Japanese garden in autumn with a bridge over a koi pond. Look at that. Now I'm gonna change that back to one step, but that was using three steps. So if I was using, uh, checking out one steps, that's how cool it is. Now, if I wanted to say something else, uh, dystopian, ooh, look at that, future with spaceships, cool, neon lights, that's cool, look, it just changes that right over, and anime girl. Let's see, the whole style changes, look at that. The anime girl doesn't look as good, but you kind of get to see where the hands doesn't fill in, the waist kind of looks a little bad, the face you can't really see that clear. Let's try running. Yeah, that's even worse with the face, but it it's instant, it's so quick. So I wouldn't really use this for models, like people, but you can actually do stuff like this. Now, if I delete certain parts of this, Look how cool this is. Look, it just changes. Instead of spaceships, let's change this over to cars. Look at that. Instant. It's just a lot of fun playing around with this. Anyway, that is it for the AI generation. If you like more videos like this, please let me know down in the comments below because I know I've done quite a few AI videos in the past and it doesn't do very well. So that's why I haven't pushed out any more AI videos. But yeah, if you guys are really interested in this, let me know down in the comments below. And if you guys are new to this channel, consider subscribing and also hitting that bell notification icon so you know when the next video is going to be out. And I say my nerd cave, hack till it hurts.